Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. I'm at my local airport because I started taking lessons probably about six months ago. So the other day, I'm talking about rebuilding stuff, about getting stuff started, and some of the guys at the airport were like, hey, there's an airplane that's been here for years, and they don't even know how many years. Nobody knows how long the airplane's been here. Right here it is. It's a 1968 or 69 Cessna 401A. Turbocharged, twin engines, 520 cubic inch air-cooled turbocharged. So they're telling me about this airplane and I'm like, I gotta see it. That just sounds like something that I'd love to see, love to mess with. The engines are locked up. It's been here forever. It hasn't ran. It could be 10 years, could be 15 years, could be 16 years. I, I don't know, nobody knows. I did some research. I tracked the owner down, just to have a conversation. And the owner said to me, you know, if you want it, you can have it if you can get the engines to run. Wait, have it like for free? For free. So the deal is if I can get it running, I can have it for free. These things in good condition, these things sell for like 200 and some thousand dollars. This is not in good condition. This has sat outside. It has corrosion on it. It's got a window that's been open getting rained in. There's birds that have been living in it. I think they nicknamed it the birdhouse. I'll take you guys for a tour of this thing. I haven't looked at it yet because I just, I wanted to look at it first with you guys. If you can't tell, I'm really excited about it just because it's probably gonna be the toughest task I've had yet because it's an airplane. Uh, who knows, I, I mean, I know a little bit about airplanes, but I figure it's got spark plugs, it needs air, it needs fuel, and it needs compression. I have that. So let's take a look at this and see what we can do. This airplane having these twin 520 cubic inch turbocharged engines, I don't know how fast it actually is or was, but it's a good size. I think it's like an eight passenger airplane. I mean, it's got de-icing on the wings. It's got de-icing on the props as well. It's got, like I said, I mean, if you can see, lots of bird droppings all over, all over this thing. If you look down in here, there's been birds living inside of every cavern, every crevice of this thing. So hopefully there wasn't anything chewing on any of the wires or anything like that. I haven't been inside this airplane yet. When we got here today, the entry door here was wide open. All right, that's why it was wide open. Wow, look at the interior in here. Oh my gosh. It literally smells like a chicken house in here. So these were known to have really nice leather interiors. They were pretty much like one of the nicest airplanes you could get. And unfortunately, this one having the window open and the door open just completely ruined the whole interior, which is such a shame. I don't know what everything looks like as far as under the carpet here and how much moisture got underneath there and possibly, you know, corroded the floor, but I would say, judging by the way this door panel here looks, it's not good. I mean, this actually even just, this actually here just, it's, there's nothing holding on it. I don't know how long ago it broke. And obviously we're gonna need some of the controls. One of the interesting things about an airplane is, you know, trying to start it. You have a propeller spinning right when you try to start it so you can't try to start it by standing anywhere near it you know you can't work the throttle outside like you can in a car or a truck it has to be done from a safe uh, safe place so you know it's like are these throttles frozen are they not yeah you know, like that right throttle is frozen well then you have your prop controls these have to work 
you know, to control the prop, you know, and they, they're, they're frozen. You have a mixture, you know, these are a little bit different where you adjust the mixture on them. Yeah, which they're pretty, they're frozen. Pretty much everything is locked up and or frozen to this. So this is going to take a while. <laughs> See what we got here. We got some Sporty's Pilot Shop, brand new map and terminal, US terminal procedures. Got some airworthiness papers here. We got the official flight manual, Cessna 401A. Got the registration, got a tow bar. That's always good. A little bit of an old hat here. I'm still waiting for something to jump out at me. Empty. Yeah, a lot of the areas around the door here are moldy. So it'll be interesting to get the carpet out of here maybe uh, do a video we can take all this stuff out of here let me know if you guys want to see that we could take uh, take all the stuff out of here and you know try to clean it up even here's some some headphones some oh some snap-on Allen wrenches some other headphones I don't think we're gonna be using those anytime soon a little afraid to sit down in here, honestly. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, you can just see how the water coming in here. This is going to be the worst part. Well, the floor is not as bad as what I thought it was going to be, at least what I'm seeing now. I have to pull the seats out and get this all cleaned up to see, you know, see how bad it is. Got some old batteries in the glove box, flashlight. So here's the control lock. It keeps it from moving in the wind. Locked up solid. It's gonna need uh, some tools. I'll need some tools to get this out, but I'm curious to see if the flight controls are free. It has some really cool features. I mean, this is an electric trim. Anybody who's ever flown knows that uh, having the electric trim is really cool. It's got a complete engine, engine monitoring system in it. It does have autopilot, which is right here. I highly doubt it'll ever work again, but, uh, but we'll check it out. Got the old King 155 comm radio, Apollo CNX-80. You know, we got an Avidon Flight Max EX500, which in its day, this was awesome. You know, in its day, like all this stuff in here, I know for sure was like, uh, you know, awesome, newest and greatest, right? What do we got here? Oh, got to have the emergency procedures. All the breakers over here. So we have a, a left and a right battery. Look at this amp meter. Literally, it's, it's an old dial amp meter. We have, you know, the prime, left and right prime for the fuel pump. Right here we have the controls for the mags. Right mag, left mag for the right engine, right mag, left mag for the left engine. We have auxiliary fuel pump, because um, it's always good to have a, a backup, which has safety switches on it as well. Um, and the starter button. Ooh. Ooh, that one's sticky. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, looks like there's a couple different settings here so it'll, i don't even know where the batteries are in this thing so yeah we got to figure out where the batteries are we got to get some juices system we have to spray down all the components that we're going to unscrew because we already know both engines are locked up solid i can't move the propellers you know even if i hang on one so we're going to try to get it started it's going to be an adventure put a post in the comments like are we going to get it started is this going to run or are we going to get one engine to run are we going to get both engines to run am i going to fail miserably put a post put your uh, put your 
your uh, your guest down. Yeah, I want it to be fun. Ever since I've talked about <laughs> this thing, I've wondered, you know, what it looks like under these these engine cowlings. And I've I have looked up a lot of stuff online. It is turbocharged. It is a 520 cubic inch big block. I mean, and if you think about the cubic inch, it's a six cylinder, 520 cubic inch. The pistons in this thing are like seven inches round. The connecting rods on them are huge. So yeah, so let's get this cowling off. Let's take a look at it. Wow. Yeah, look at, look at the pile of bird crap. From what everybody's been saying about uh, this airplane, my guess is it's been here for 16, 17 years, not running in place. <laughs> this is so disgusting. Obviously, we got to get all this stuff cleared out before we'd attempt to start it. Who knows what it's hiding? You know, it's one thing to get an airplane that's been a hangar queen for 20 or 30 years much easier than getting one that's been a chicken coop for the last 16 years. You know, I kind of made the bet in a way that, you know, that I'd get it running. So, yeah, so hopefully we can. Well, it's even got some gammy injectors in, which are not cheap. Probably should have wiped all the bird poop off at first, you know it. I know. Yes, this is all bird droppings. So we get to work on bird droppings today. Probably wondering what we're doing with their home. You guys are taking my apartment. Right. It's like, ooh, there's people here. Ooh. Ooh, it's moving a tiny little bit. All right, so this cowling hasn't been off in a number of years. Yeah, this, this doesn't look good. <laughs> like I was saying, like looking at the interior, the avionics and, and everything in the interior, back when this was parked, I would be willing to bet was was the best of the best back then. And the really cool thing, this is the first time I've seen a turbocharged airplane engine. So it's literally got a big old turbo on here, which anything with a turbocharger or a supercharger is extra cool. So, so that's exciting. Now, it does mean that it does have extra controls though. And it's something that is extra that could be locked up. So, uh, you know, trying to get it started will, it'll make it even more interesting. Yes, it's really gonna need a vacuum and pressure washer to even get this close to clean enough to be able to see anything. I mean, it's, it's disgusting to unbury the spark plugs here. The spark plugs looks pretty good because it's been covered in, uh, in straw, compliments of the birds. Some of the cylinders have been sealed off for the most part, just because the valves would be closed, depending on what part of the stroke they're on. But I think it's probably gonna be four out of the six are gonna be somewhat open. One or two of the cylinders, the valves were completely open. And these are really simple exhaust systems that come, they're open. So literally it's just been open to the air, moisture's gonna be in there. Those are usually gonna be the ones that, uh, that rust the most. So luckily, uh, this is a Continental engine and not a, a Lycoming. Continentals have the cam down in closer to the oil pan. It's actually in the oil pretty much. So those cams stay lubricated. Even if it's sitting oil stain on them, the Lycoming sit up higher. 
So they'll get rusted when they sit for a long time. They'll get spalling. You have to split the case. Basically, you got to rebuild the whole engine because the, the cam gets some rust on it. On these, it wouldn't be the case. But these uh, Continental cylinders, from what I understand, have a couple more issues than the uh, than the light Cummings do. You know, so we'll see see what these look like. I did bring my bore scope with so we can uh, get down inside these cylinders after we get the plugs out and see what they look like. I could bypass a lot of systems on this engine just to get it started because it is a magneto ignition and there's two of them on an airplane for redundancy just in case one goes out your engine doesn't go out when your engines go out in the airplane it's a bad thing so really as, as long as you have a ground wire that you can control for safety to shut these off you can literally find the starter solenoid which is going to be somewhere around here you can literally just power it up from here if you wanted to and you could start this up without going through the whole airplane system. As long as you have a ground, a remote ground somewhere to shut it off and as long as everything's out of the way. One of these props spinning at, uh, you know, spinning period, I mean, they're, 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 they're metal, they're like a knife. Um, you, you don't want to get in their way. And also too, once they fire up, you know, it's what makes them move. So, you know, this airplane has really flat tires, but we are also gonna have to chalk the tires, tie it off, make sure it's good because uh, we want to be safe, so. Oh my God, what did I get myself into? These have dual spark plugs. So you have plugs up top, goes to one mag, and then the other mag, like they swap top and bottom. So six cylinders, there's 12 spark plugs. We're gonna have to pull all these plugs out because we're gonna have to clean the plugs. Obviously we're gonna have to check the cylinders, see how much rust is in there. Because I'm really curious too. We'll have to make sure the air intakes are clear. Chances are the injectors here, they're gonna be clogged. We're gonna have to check the fuel tanks because chances are there's a ton of water in there, you know, just from sitting. Well, at least there's not as much stuff to clean out on this side. Oh, it's frozen solid. <laughs> yeah, the linkage is frozen solid, which that's not good either. All right, so we pretty much got uh, most of that stuff unburied. We'll get our lubricant out, uh, our penetrating oil, and we'll get those all loosened up so we can check the cylinders out. I have a feeling we're gonna go through a lot of this today. Where? First one came loose. Working on anything older, I always worry about them, um, you know, like a spark plug breaking off in the head because they're so corroded or rusted into it. This is an aluminum head with a, you know, metal spark plug. So, you know, obviously the aluminum can uh, corrode pretty easily. In a perfect world, I'd be in a shop and I would have pressure washed this whole thing before taking any of the spark plugs out. But hey, this thing is so big, I don't see it fitting in a shop anywhere. And B, it's really heavy and with flat tires. So, all right, let's see what the first spark plug looks like here. This will tell us what we're in for. So it's got a good bit of rust around here. If you look inside the spark plug there, there's a ton of lead deposits, but there's also some brown rusted corrosion down inside the spark plug. So it's what I expected. Obviously I was hoping it would look brand new and stuff, but that wasn't gonna be the case. 
Oh, just broke the ratchet. It's always good to have a back, some backup tools. This one's a lot tighter. If you saw our Jeep video, I showed you how to not take spark plugs out with an electric ratchet. One of the major reasons why I'm not using an electric ratchet, as far as taking these out, when I put them back in, I will, is just because of what I learned on that video. And these are like 35 bucks a piece, so I don't want to break any. Not to mention, you can't just go down to your parts store to get them. Yeah, so pretty much all the spark plugs that we pulled out so far, they're all rusty. That means there's been rust and uh, corrosion in the cylinders. I wonder where the batteries are in this thing. If I design an airplane, where would I put the battery? I wonder if they're back in that compartment back there. One thing I just did notice too, the fuel tanks, there's a fuel tank on the, right behind the engine. There's a fuel tank in the wing and there's a fuel tank out on the tips. They call them tip tanks. I don't know how many gallons this holds, but I'll bet you this holds in the two, 250 gallon range. And I'll bet you the burn with these engines with as little as I know about them, I'll bet you these together are probably burning 36 to 40 gallons an hour. So 36 to 40 gallons an hour, think about that. One hour in the air, 40 gallons. So aviation fuel is about 550 right now. Let's just make it six for math, right? So 40 gallons, one hour times six, $240. $240 to fly one hour in the air. Now, you could be flying at, I, I believe in this thing, you could easily be doing like 250 miles an hour. So, you know, I don't know what that comes miles per gallon. I'm not sure what that comes to, but, but miles per dollar is really expensive. The other thing to consider, you know, is, is maintenance wise. These engines, I think these time out, they call it, you know, timing out TBO, uh, they need to be rebuilt every, I think these are like 1,600 or 1,800 hours. And to rebuild one, one of these has to be 30,000, just one. So if you do the math per hour, the expense of operating one of these airplanes is insane. And that's not to mention, you know, your propeller needs maintained, your uh, everything. And, and they have to be maintained to such a, a high level, uh, you know, because obviously you're flying over people's houses and, you know, Falling out of the sky isn't too much fun, unless you're skydiving, but, but these spark plugs here are pretty new. At least they look that way. Oh. Yeah, and this one does not want to come loose. All right. So it's, this is the same as the other side. It's rusty. The top spark plugs in, in these engines usually stay cleaner than the bottom ones. The bottom ones are probably gonna be even more corroded, rusty, carboned up, so. Yeah, they're just, they're all rusty. That's not what I wanted to see. We got all six spark plugs out. I didn't get the bottom ones out yet. I'm gonna have to get the bottom ones out but I don't have the right wrench with me. Oh, there's one. So maybe I will be able to get the bottom ones out as well, because we'll have to clean all those up before we attempt to fire it up. Ah, oh, got them loose. Nice. All right, well, we got those wires out. I didn't think I was gonna be able to without the right wrench. All right, these are the same way. They're pretty stuck in there, so I'm just gonna loosen them up. Enough to get some oil back behind there. That one's really tight. It did come a little bit. That first one that's not coming out probably has a ton of corrosion. The bottom spark plugs are usually the worst because all the moisture sits in the bottom of the of the cylinder. And it looks something like that. 
So that's aluminum corrosion right there from inside the cylinder. <laughs> oh, oh man, wow. Yeah, so that's rust and aluminum in the spark plug. What do you guys think the chances are now that this engine's gonna start? Post something in the comments. You know, don't cheat, don't wait to the end. Post something now, are we gonna be able to get this thing started? So this, uh, this spark plug, the lower spark plug is definitely stuck. I don't wanna try to get it out and I can't get any penetrating oil into it from outside. So I'm just gonna try to fill that cylinder up with penetrating oil so it can seep from the inside down. I really think it's our best bet. We're gonna need to do this anyway, you know, just because we know these cylinders are gonna be rusted almost solid, I'm pretty sure. So, so we'll go back on the other side. We'll get the lower spark plugs. I'm kinda wondering if any of you have ever flown in one of these. Have any of you ever flown one as a pilot? I've only been in a I think one twin engine, smaller general aviation aircraft like this, and the performance of them are, uh, it's, it's really impressive. You think about it, if these are, I believe 350 horsepower each, so it's a 700 horsepower airplane. That's really cool. No wonder it burns 40 gallons an hour. I was trying to clean the carbon off this, uh, spark plug lead and it pretty much disintegrated. If you look at this one, it's the same way. So these wires may not work. To see if we can get this to run, we may have to replace the wires. So this one actually has oil in it. That tells me one way or the other it has oil in, in the cylinder. Maybe this cylinder had some weak rings or something. And the last time it was ran, it left some oil in it. So this cylinder will probably be the only one that's not rusty because it had a coating of oil in there. Ooh, for some reason I have a feeling that this definitely would not have started and definitely may not start. Oh yeah, that one's full of oil as well. Yeah, so six and two actually um, had some oil in the plugs. So they're gonna be the, uh, the cleaner cylinders. All right, Let's see if this other one loosened up or not. I don't like it. So I can't get this cylinder's bottom plug out without breaking, and I know it's gonna break. It's loosening a little bit back and forth, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this cylinder with two cycle oil. If you guys watched uh, any of our other videos, especially our Jeep video, you know, it was a locked up engine. We filled up the cylinder with two stroke because it's really good lubricant and it will burn um, that oil. So it's a good lubricant to use if you got a cylinder stuck. So I'm gonna fill this one up. If I had enough penetrating oil, I'd fill it up with that just for the threads, but I don't. But I'm gonna use the two-stroke. It'll get the cylinder coated as well. So hopefully we can get this prop here unlocked, you know, get the engine unlocked. And if you haven't watched the Jeep video, obviously after you're done watching this video, go and watch that video. Um, yeah, I gotta stop saying, um, um. All right, that should be enough to get in there and, and get in right on those threads. So we're gonna let that soak for a while. So hopefully then we can pull that plug out without stripping anything out. Next, we're gonna borescope all the cylinders. So we'll be able to look in there. We'll be able to see how, how carboned up they are, how rusty they are, and really know the condition uh, of this before we do anything to it. These are, are very expensive, these cylinders. And although this engine hasn't ran in a really long time, if these cylinders are in good condition, you know, they're worth a good amount of money. So we definitely don't want to go ruining anything, you know, just for the sake of, of trying to move things around. So, you know, so we'll scope them, we'll check them. Uh, you guys will get to see exactly what it looks like inside there. And I'll get to see what it looks like inside there. 
You know, one thing I didn't do, I didn't do what I probably should have done first, which was see if the engine had any oil in it. Oh, she's got some oil. Let's see how much. She's got 10 quarts, tops off at 12, so that's good. That means uh, it's been sitting in oil anyway. So this is like my newest toy. I mean, <clears throat> tool. And it will show us what it looks like inside. Really good high definition as well. This thing is really cool. It's a, it's a newer bore scope. Um, I may put a, a link down in the description that, uh, you know, a place where you guys can pick one of these up if you'd want one. Because they are newer and they're really cool. I mean, uh, you could check your bore or you could check your tonsils if you wanted to. What is a proctologist, Chef? It's really cool. You can do a 180 with a camera, a 90, any infinite, you know, adjustment. And it'll hook up to, to any iPad or phone or, or anything like that. All right, so this will actually either record or take pictures directly to your phone. We're gonna hop in uh, cylinder three here and see what it looks like. And that one's at top dead center, so that is it. So I'm gonna have to be able to move that one to see that one. So we'll try, try this one here. So there's the top of the piston, which you can tell is quite a, corroded quite a bit. There's the wall of the cylinder. So when I was talking about a lot of rust and corrosion, that's what I was talking about. There's the valve. You can see how that one was open for 15 or so years to the atmosphere. So let's check this one where the plug is stuck. We did pour a ton of oil in here, so. There's all the oil sitting in there that we put in there, which is good. That means it's soaking in, and look at all that rust. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go check the other ones. This is the one, uh, cylinder six, I believe, which seemed like it had a good bit of oil. Yeah, see now that one, you can see the, uh, the side of the cylinder now, you don't see any crosshatch or anything like that, but you can see there's a good bit of oil from what is running right there sitting inside the cylinder. That's a good sign. So that will probably actually be pretty good because it had some lubrication in it. Here's cylinder two. So you can see some crosshatch down there in the cylinder, but as you come up to where the intake valves and exhaust valves would be, there is a good bit of rust and corrosion. One, three, and five are worse for some reason than two four and six. So two, four and six really didn't look terribly bad. I mean, they're rusted, but you can tell the rust isn't as thick. On the odd side, on the right side of the engine, it's real thick rust. It's it's pitted into the, uh, the sidewalls. So as long as we can get it unlocked, I think we'll be good to go, but it's just getting unlocked. So we're gonna get some more of that two-stroke oil and we're gonna fill these cylinders up just to get that lubrication in there. I'm going to try to move the prop, you know, to jar it loose. We may be able to jar it loose, we may not. Hopefully we can, because if we can't, we can't get it started, so. Try to get this thing out. You know what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna fill these cylinders up. All right, so while this is still soaking, we're gonna get some lubrication in all these cylinders. Ooh which a lot of it's gonna run out the bottom because I have the plugs out. So first, we're gonna stick these spark plugs in and uh, fill these cylinders up and get a good amount of lubrication in there. I don't wanna scar the cylinders if, if they are savable. I don't wanna ruin anything. All right, let's try this again. He's already had some oil in, but a little extra won't hurt. All right, so we got some lubrication in, in, in all the cylinders. I did have to put the bottom spark plugs in because it was coming out 
I'm gonna try to rock back uh, the prop back and forth, try to get this thing turning. It does have oil in it, so that's good. Really, it's just getting it unlocked now, so. Oh, there she goes. All right, she's loosened up now. One of the things to watch for or to listen for when you have a airplane with mags that hasn't been started in a while or any engine with mags is uh, there's a click that you're gonna hear from the coupled one when the mag fires, basically. I haven't heard that yet, so. All right, it's loosened up. It's a good sign. All right, um, it's loose. It's actually spinning really good. But I don't hear the mags uh, clicking. So unless these are different than mags that I've ever uh, heard, Every time that the engine, you know, would, would spark, would fire, you would hear it click and it's not clicking at all. So they're probably stuck, which would mean we'd have to, uh, to pop the mags out, clean them all out, service them, probably set the points in them just to get them to fire. Hopefully that's not the case because that's going, that would take like a while. So yeah, I can't hear them at all clicking. So this is the uh, the throttle right here. You know, it's, it is fuel and mechanical fuel injection, uh, but here's the throttle controls. So if you guys could watch this, let me know. I'm gonna go inside the airplane and I'm gonna work the throttle a little bit. Let me know if it's, you know, if it is working or if it's not, because when we actually try to fire it up, fire it up, I gotta be in the airplane, I gotta be clear of the prop. So that has to work. It's not like I can stand out here and operate the prop. now. You know, maybe some of you knew someone crazy enough to do that at one time, or maybe one of you have done that at one time, but I'm not gonna do that. So I like my arms connected to my body. So a lot of times these cables get corroded and rusted when they're sitting, which this one obviously is. They're not the easiest to get to either. about full throttle there. So the cable that goes to the linkage was tight. We were able to knock it loose. So I'm gonna go back in the airplane. If you guys can watch and see, make sure the, the mixture and throttle, see if that's you know loosened up. Is it going all the way down? Yeah. Nice. All right, so before we fire it up, before we try to, we're gonna have to make sure it has fuel. We're gonna have to look in the tank, see what the fuel looks like. I mean, it's, you know, 15, 16, 20 year old. I don't know, it's, it's whatever fuel's in there is really old. But the thing with an airplane, it's not like I can get down the road to the gas station and get gas. So, uh, and it is 100 octane aviation fuel as well. So, you know, there's a port underneath the wing that you can test the fuel and and you know see what it looks like see how much water's in it and stuff like that i don't have that tool with me right this minute so i'll go get that tool we'll test it i did look in there it looks like there is there is some fuel i can't really tell how much i would say not very much so it's got about an inch of fuel in this in this right tank We'll grab a fuel can and we'll check and see how much is in there. All right, yeah, 
yeah, that's not opening. So eventually we'll want to open that. So I'm going to go ahead and soak it up. All right, so cylinders are still soaking. Our throttle works, our mixture control works. We have a little fuel in the center tank. If that's a main tank or not a main tank, I'm not sure, but, uh, but there's about an inch of fuel in there. Yeah, so next I wanna see, what do I wanna see next? I think we're gonna check and see where the battery is. It may have a battery um, back here, which would make more sense to me. Who knows what's gonna be in here? Oh, so there's nothing in here. It's an empty trunk. A little bit of corrosion starting, but it is definitely a trunk. Where's the battery? What's up here in this compartment? See if it's empty. All right, so looks like empty storage compartment but it looks like it's in actually in good shape but uh again really cool really cool airplane as far as baggage i know talking to a pilot that had flown one of these uh extensively he had said as far as amount of weight that you can carry because you on an airplane you're limited on how much you can you can haul in it you don't want to fall out of the sky what he had told me is like if you can fit it inside of it you can haul it they're kind of like the uh the station wagon of the sky so yeah with all that extra storage compartments i mean you got one in that wing one in that wing a big one in the front you got one in the rear you're good to go. So we'll go inside and uh, see if we can open up uh, the compartment. I, I believe the batteries are probably gonna be in the back. All right, so I'm thinking that the batteries are gonna be in here, or the battery, there should be two batteries, maybe one battery, I don't know. Let's see where else they would be. Can't promise there won't be a bat or something that won't fly out of here. Wow, it's really clean back here. So, the battery's not in here. The more I look through this airplane, the more I think to myself, you know, would it actually be uh, a good airplane to fix and to get back up uh, flying again, you know, or I'm, am I crazy thinking that? I mean, because really, if, if you gutted the inside out, literally just took everything out, cleaned everything up, and either you know had new panels made, or found uh, you know a um, a salvaged uh, airplane or something, maybe one that was wrecked or something that that had a mint interior. I think I could you know could replace all this stuff pretty easily as long as there's no corrosion, you know, inside of here. Hey, it's a battery. Yes. Pop this post terminal off, it should pop right out. I assume the relays and stuff must be in here. I'm thinking the wire runs down in there and there's probably starter relays and stuff in here because I didn't see them. Uh, I didn't see him out by the other engine, so. I just smelled it out. That's what my buddy just said. He's like, it is stuffed in there. All right. So we got the battery out. I think it's a 24 volt. I would assume so because it has six cells. Uh, six and six. So it is a 24 volt battery. It's a $700 battery. 
And again, that's, uh, you know, anything aviation, it's gonna be expensive. The battery itself doesn't look too out of shape. I didn't test the battery. So it is, it is, I don't see any fluid in it. So, oh, no, there's fluid in there. All right, so I kinda wonder if I could charge it or something. Get my tester and see what it tests at. 6.8 volts. It's good that it does have, uh, have some, you know, some voltage, it may be able to be saved. I mean, it, it, it's too old to, to have an airplane to fly with as far as FAA standards go, but just to start something and run something, it would be fine. So just because I'm curious, we may take a, a battery that I brought with us, which is 12 volts. I may hook it up to it just to see if it would have enough energy just to turn over the starter a little bit and get that engine moving. All right, so it's always a defining moment. So this is only 12 volts, but it's actually pretty high amperage in comparison to the other battery. So we have it hooked up to the negative. We have it hooked up to the positive. I'll go inside. All right, so I'm inside the airplane and we're gonna try to fire this thing up. So we have everything tied off. We have all the wheels chocked. We have the brakes on. It's gonna be the first time that we turn this thing over. Hopefully it starts. Sounds like it should start. It's got fuel pressure. It bleeds off pretty quick after it does have fuel pressure though. I think the mechanical pump will take care of that. So, uh, man, a little nervous. Clear prop. Got a lot of nothing there. Clear prop. So that has enough voltage to turn it over, but it's not the, the correct voltage or amperage. So we're gonna have to you know, get 24 volt. I would take two 12 volt batteries and wire them, uh, I think in a series, series or parallel, one of the two. But the problem with that is it's gonna have a really high amperage, I believe, uh, which wouldn't be good for, uh, for some of it. Although we're not meaning to fly this thing uh, out of here or anything like that. So. I don't think it would really hurt it, but you know, amazingly, the engine was locked up. We turned over by hand. Now it's turned over by the starter. So really the next thing we had to do is get a 24 volt battery in it, clean the plugs up, put the plugs in, get some fuel in it. And then we would try to fire it up. So let's, let's get that stuff done. I have a feeling this one's gonna be the same way. Yeah, so, um, so it's definitely got some corrosion. Don't see anything in, in the tank, and the tank inside looks pretty clean. The seal looks questionable, so. Yeah, so that, that actually seems to work okay. So we let this thing set for, I don't know, probably like two or three hours now. So um, I'm gonna try to get this out hopefully we don't uh strip this out because it would negate all the work that we did today so we're gonna keep running this thing in and out a bit until it's loose enough yes so we uh we got it out Nothing seems stripped. Yeah, we're good. So 
that problem plug, you know, by filling the cylinder up with some oil, working it in and out real slow back and forth, it allowed the oil to get down in the threads, eventually loosen up, so we're good to go. So bad. It's all corrosion. So we went over to the shop, we cleaned all the spark plugs up, which I'll show you guys later. We did find a 24 volt battery and we found a 24 volt jumper as well. So we have both of those hooked up. I'm gonna go inside here. We're gonna see if the engine spins over a little bit better with the 24 volts. All right, let's try this again. Clear prop. So the fuel truck's coming. We're gonna get some fuel in the tank, uh, check for leaks and stuff like that, then put the plugs in. And then we got fuel, we got spark plugs, we got plenty of air out here. So, <laughs> so then we're gonna try to get this thing fired up. You're like, this doesn't look like zero zero whiskey. <laughs> no, it looks like a box. Looks like the birdhouse, that's what we call it. So I gotta put like uh, 20 gallons in this tank and that's it, yeah. This one over here has got a really rusty chain on it, so it's been empty for some time. But uh, I think we'll go ahead and just put a little bit of fuel in it. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't leak out anywhere, right? Those jack shit by the way. <laughs> yeah, I figured. This Stay thing's up. gonna catch on fire. It's gonna catch on fire. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Mm. <laughs> Whatever God you believe in. On that note, let me go out by the grass here. No, just kidding. <laughs> Stand real far away. Yeah, it hasn't ran in at least over 15 years. I kind of don't want to see the engine run. It's going too soon. We hope. All right, there was a good bit of rust in there, but it's coming out clean now. Kinda. All right, so not very clean. All right, it's getting cleaner. Yeah, that's not good. Why would there be fuel coming out of the middle of the wing? I guess I should have put couple less gallons in first. It's, it's dripping fuel there now, so I'm gonna have to pull, uh, I gotta pull it off quick and figure out where it's coming from. I will figure it out here. Man, there's all kinds of fuel leaking out of here, and yes, I see where it's coming from. All right, so right there is the leak. It's a good one. Man. What is it with mice, 
squirrels, nuts, and old things. It's just a new shut off valve, which makes zero sense. All right, so it's day two here with the Cessna project. Yesterday, we ran into a couple different problems. We got fuel in and in the tank. One thing that you can't do when something sits so long, you can't check all the fuel connections until you have fuel in the tanks. We put a little bit of fuel in the tanks, uh, and which there's six tanks, so which is really crazy. But anyway, there's six tanks, uh, there's three in each wing. We put fuel in the main tank, and a little bit after, it started leaking. We were able to shut the tank off and everything, but uh, you know, we definitely, definitely wanted to get that shut down. We found the issue. It's a, a union, a fitting that is actually at the wing root where it comes into the cockpit. So first thing we got to do today is uh, we got to get some new O-rings in. We luckily found the O-rings for it rather quickly. So we're going to get those in today. That'll take care of that leak. The rest of it looks good on the right side. Also, we got to go get a battery. We have to clean the spark plugs up. Then we got to get them back in the airplane. And hopefully, we get it started. This is the culprit. Probably, if this was an automotive O-ring, which it's probably the exact same thing, would be like 10 cents. But this is like a $10 O-ring. So it dried out, it split. There's two of them in the union. Luckily, we were able to locate two of these O-rings. Really crazy considering it's a uh, you know, 68 or 69 uh, airplane. But uh, yeah, it's probably a standard old automotive uh, O-ring. So we're gonna get those installed. We'll get that union back together, get this thing fired up. It's gonna be super tough to get these in there. It's the only thing when working on airplanes. Sometimes these are worse than cars as it pops right on. Put the other one on there. So I got the O-rings on. I'm gonna get a little bit of grease on them here. Hopefully that'll help everything slide over top of it. All right, get some wrenches on there. We'll get that tightened up completely. Uh, it felt like a good fit. It was kind of hard to get the fitting over top of the O-ring, so yeah, that's a good sign. Well, there's only one way to tell. I'm sure not gonna do it with uh, 20 gallons though. I'm guessing we'll put some fuel in there and then we'll see if it uh, if it leaks or not. If it does leak, you know, it's, it's an airplane we're not gonna fly again. We're just trying to get the engine started. So we could, you know, cut that union out and just use, uh, you know, a piece of hose in between the two with two clamps. I know that would seal it. I like to get it sealed with this, you know, so it would be much nicer not to have to ruin anything. Well, only thing we do is get fuel in it and find out, so. We got the O-rings in. We put five gallons of fuel back in the tank again, and it's not leaking so far. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch all the tanks around to, to make sure we get fuel flowing over this way. She's good. Doesn't look like it's leaking. So we'll get the spark plugs back in. Uh, we'll get that all hooked up, and then we'll power everything up and and hopefully fire this thing up. Ooh, this one went in nice. Yeah, these are going right in. Nice, it screwed right in. Let's see if I can get these in without having them modified. So we got all the plugs in. Uh, we had to clean up the threads on the plugs. We had to clean up the threads on the heads. <laughs> it was uh, interesting getting them in there. So we'll get these all tightened up and then we'll get the wires, uh, all the spark plug wires uh, hooked up 
and then and then we'll power it up and see if we can get this thing to fire off. Get the other side. All right, so those plugs are all tightened down. Get these wires on. So, if any of you have ever worked on an airplane engine and are familiar with how much of a pain getting spark plugs in and out is, or getting these wires screwed in or screwed out or attached, Post a comment. Let me know what you think about it, because I can tell you it's not fun. Especially when there's 12 of them per engine. All right, so all the plugs are in, all the wires are connected. So let's get this thing powered up and we'll kick it over and see if it'll start. I wonder if it has any compression. Because if the valves are stuck open, it won't have any compression. Got some, not much. The tip of the propeller, if you notice, is really close to the ground. I mean, we got we got like four and a half inches uh, clearance. The struts on the airplane have been collapsed just because they'll leak out. They hold nitrogen, so we did bring an air tank. We're gonna put air in them. Hopefully they stay up at least for a few hours because I really don't wanna start this with the propeller that close to the ground. So I'd, I'd like to see like another four inches or so of clearance. Let's get some air in those and see if we can get it up off the ground. my valve tool with me to pull the valve out. No. I was excited for that to work. It did not work. Front tire actually has air in it. Let's see if we can get the rear shock to pump up some. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's not helping. Well, that kind of sucks. Well, worst thing that happens is a prop can hit the ground. I, I honestly, I honestly don't think it's going to hit anyway. The tire would have to blow out, and then it would possibly hit. All right, so that didn't work too well. I need to get a different fitting. I don't have one here, but we do have some clearance there. It's it's not like we're gonna go uh, real full throttle, so we're gonna chance it. Like I said, I don't I don't see it hitting. I mean, the the struts are fully compressed. We do have air in the tires. Even if the tire would all would blow out all of a sudden, I believe we should be fine. So and I think we're good here. We have no leaks there. Let's hook the battery up. So we're cheating a little bit here just to power it up. We're using some. Uh, Jumper cables has this battery. I don't believe it'll fit in that battery, battery box anyway. And also for some extra power jumper pack. All right. So we got power hooked up. Let's go inside the airplane. 
Uh, one thing we didn't look at yesterday, we didn't look at any of the avionics. And I didn't power them up because I was kind of worried about sparks, smoke, and fire. But uh, everything's going smoothly today. So I figure, yeah, let's just, let's fire them up. Let's see what works and what doesn't. I'm not expecting any of them to work because they've been, uh, they've been in a you know, pretty moist environment for the last 15 or 20 years. All right, let me see if I can find the avionics switch. We've got the fuel transfer tanks here. ADFFT on off, XMWX on off. So many switches. ELT, you don't want that on, that's for sure. <laughs> I have no idea where the switch is. All right, this is start hitting switches. All right, we got power here. We don't have power here, we don't have power here. Do have power uh, here on the Avidon, and it is turning on. It looks like everything is powering up. Wow. There's our radar. And we have, we do have fuel pressure on the right, on the red engine. I'll have to spend some more time, uh, some more time looking around, because there's so many, there's just so many switches on this thing. And some of them aren't even marked anymore because the markings wore off probably years ago. All right, the autopilot. I wonder if that came on. I highly, highly doubt it. So it's looking like the uh, autopilot uh, did turn on. Wow, so the autopilot actually does work. The 155 may not work and the CNX80 may not work, but it does look like everything else works though. All right, so let's get out there. Let's get this thing ready to see if it'll fire up. So we definitely uh, got no fire. It's still feeling like there's like barely any compression. So. Well, there's some there. Yeah, there's some compression there, that's good. Wow, good compression. Getting better and better. Maybe I should check the air filter. We could have a bird living in there. Hey, there's a turbo charger. Which is locked up. Well. Is not going to let it run too well. So I probably should have checked this first, but I was really excited to try to get it started tonight, so I didn't check it. But we pulled the air filter out, which it looks like mice uh, crawled in there and was stealing some of it for a house, uh, which really isn't a big deal. 
what is a big deal is uh, this is a turbocharged engine and uh, the turbocharger is not spinning when I reach in here. It's not gonna start without the, uh, the turbo working. So I would assume that it got some moisture in it and, uh, and the bearings are locked up. So before starting this engine, Unfortunately, that turbocharger is going to need serviced or at least unlocked somehow, which I think means it's going to have to come out of the airplane. It's going to have to be taken apart. I'm wondering if the other turbo is locked up or not. So now we'll go in the left engine because the turbo is locked up. We'll do the same exact shit, which I am not doing today. But yeah, she was definitely trying her uh, hardest to turn over, huh? Uh, yeah, there's good compression there. Oh, yeah. Pressure's getting better. Oh yeah, that's good compression there. Tie a really long rope to the prop. All right. Yeah, just floor it. It's just kind of hard to tell, but like I said, uh, a locked up turbo is not good. So it didn't want to fire. It didn't even seem like it tried to fire. Like I didn't hear any backfiring, I didn't hear anything. It's questionable if either mag is, is firing or not. It's so hard to tell on an airplane because you, it's not like you can hold a spark plug against the head while well, you could, but I wouldn't advise it anyway. I'm sure there's some tooling or some kind of, of test equipment that you could visually reference from inside the cockpit or something, but I don't, I don't have any of that. You know, the one thing I'm, I'm really worried about is the turbo has to spin very freely because it's driven by exhaust pressure. I mean, if that thing's rusted solid inside there, but that's something more that, you know, jarring it loose really isn't going to do what you need to do to get it to run or to get it to, to spin smoothly. So, you know, that would have to be torn apart and pretty much rebuilt if it's going to work again. I am curious, it may take the cowling off of the left engine and check that one and see if it spins freely or not. If we had to, we probably could take the turbo off of that one and stick it over on here. I mean, we do have a, a whole spare parts engine on the same airplane, but it's a lot of work and it is cold out here. So I don't know if we're going to do that today or not. Any chances that one's frozen up too? Pretty good. Yeah. We'll find out. So we might as well check out this left side engine since we haven't, uh, haven't checked it out at all. We'll see what it looks like. Here's the left side engine. It looks to actually be a little bit cleaner overall than the right engine. The log books to this airplane were lost long ago, unfortunately. So I don't know how many hours are on each engine or any of the maintenance that was done or not done or anything. But these do like the mags and stuff, they look a little bit newer. So they look like they may have been serviced a little bit more than the, the other engine. But the cylinders all look really good. I'm gonna pop off the cover to this turbo and we'll see if this turbocharger is locked up like the other one is or not. locked up solid so just in case any of you were wondering should you leave a turbocharged airplane out in the weather for years and years and years the answer would be no interesting it has a really cool blow-off valve right here though yeah so we have two locked up turbochargers on two turbocharged engines. Um, so I got to think about that a little bit. So cool thing is that, you know, this isn't leaking anymore. Turbo locked up, that's bad. It doesn't look too hard to get out though. A blow off valve on this one's pointed down, which is interesting. All right, well, let's get this thing all uh, buttoned back up again. So, I hate to admit it, I gotta throw in the towel here today. We didn't get it started. I'm not sure if we have spark or not. It is hard to check on an airplane. I'm gonna have to rebuild the mags. I'm gonna have to pull the turbo off. I'm gonna have to disassemble the turbo. Pretty much rebuild it, uh, which is gonna be very expensive to do just for an engine that we're 
just want to get running. We're not ever going to fly this. Someone else may fly it though, so maybe it'd be worthwhile. So it looks like today we didn't get it running. So I, I do get to talk to the owner, see what we can figure out. You know, we did check the left engine too to see if that turbo was locked up. I was hoping maybe it wasn't. Maybe we could swap turbos or something, but it's locked up as well. Make sure you guys subscribe though. Make sure you turn on notifications because there's one thing I don't do is I don't quit. We're gonna get this thing to run. It may not be uh, this week or next week, but keep watching the channel. We're gonna pop that turbo off. We're gonna pop these uh, mags off. We're gonna rebuild them and we're gonna put it back on here. This thing's gonna run one way or the other. We're not gonna quit. We're gonna get this thing to start. It'll be interesting to see what do these mags look like inside. You know, so we'll get these rebuilt. Um, I do have some aviation mechanics that uh, are really good at rebuilding these. So they'll come over and uh, we'll get these rebuilt. And turbo wise, you know, I'll, I'll probably try to rebuild this one or pull it apart and free it up or something. If we can't, I'm, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and buy one. And like I said, we gotta get this thing to run. Even if that means getting it to run just to tear it apart and uh, part it out. You know, I mean, unless you guys you know, I think we should do something else with it. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you. Oh, I don't like when I don't get started.